So good afternoon. I didn't quite hear that. Am I talking to myself? Good afternoon. It's a beautiful spring day, and uh, it's also National Poetry Month, so welcome. Um, I'm Giovanni Singleton, the Lunch Poems Coordinator, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all here today. Um, first, I want to invite you all to sign up on our mailing list, which is located at the librarian's desk. Um, if you heard about this reading by any other means other than our uh, receiving an email, please do sign up. Um, we have one more event in this, our 15th year, uh, which will occur on May 5th as our student reading. So please uh, do join us for that. And also, um, this reading today and all of our past readings can be viewed on our website. Um, so please log on and check out uh, webcasts um, that can be seen on YouTube as well as uh, through iTunes. And usually our readings are posted within uh, a couple of weeks. Also, we're on Facebook, so if you're more comfortable there, do log on and, and friend us. Um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Robert Haas, who is the director of the Lunch Poems series, and he will introduce this afternoon's reader. Thank you. Thanks, Giovanni. Uh, our next reading, the last one of the spring, is the reading of uh, uh, lots of students from the campus. Uh, it's always a wonderful event. So uh, what we're doing today is celebrating the publication of Jeffrey O'Brien's new book, his third book, Metropole. His first book is um, uh, The Guns and Flags Project, and the second book, no, Green, Green, uh, other way, and gray, and the, and the Guns and Flags Project. Uh, Jeffrey, as you know, most of you, maybe all of you know, teaches in the English department and at San Quentin Prison. Um, he's just an amazing poet, a dazzling poet. Um, uh, we were just talking, because Jillian is working on an essay, teaching an essay by Henry J by William James, Henry's brother, called The Stream of Thought. And I had been reading Jeffrey all morning and thinking about the stream of thought. I was just going to say something like, Jeffrey O'Brien is so smart and so imaginative and so um, acutely, comically aware of the possibilities that are unfolding as he writes a line and it turns into the next line, that it's kind of like watching Fred Astaire dance on a mirrored floor, <laughs> that that would be one, except that that doesn't get the other thing that's going on in his work, which is amazing qualities of observation that turn metaphors into other metaphors into other metaphors that dislodge syntax, and that doesn't uh, account for um, the moral uh, and political um, uh, anxiety and quest, really, it's an embarrassing old modernist word, that drives his poems. You feel like that the moral and political dimensions of life in an Ashbury poem are a floating part of the furniture like everything else, a floating part. That's not true for Jeffrey, he's trying to He's trying to find his way. In each world, a current flows. One section of the amazing long poem, which is uh, iambic pentameter verse written in prose. In each other's world, a current flows. Continuous as finite outline, overhearing how she practices relationships, you realize you yourself are a little different on the phone. That would be by itself a really extraordinary haiku about, the, about what um, Jung calls the educative function of marriage. The laptops lie in different rooms nearby, a parody of love. It's very different in the prison. Volleys, shouting sounds recross a massive central wall. A temple underneath another one, its function now reduced to yielding finds assistance make. Without an extra day that stops for no one, simple nods will have to do. The moves through one kind of perception, the experience of a domestic interior toward another kind of 
the, the way life t time passes in the in the in the prison to uh, the way the metaphor of that brings up a notion of finding is very typical of the way the poems move. They're just powerfully magical. We're so lucky to have him among us. Please welcome Jeffrey O'Brien. Thank you, Bob. Um, writing poetry, the motivation for writing poetry might be to eventually be introduced by Bob. Um, although I want to correct you because I think I might rather be Fred Astaire, actually, <laughs> even without the mirror. Um, thank you for this show of Listening Force, which I know is due as much to the room and the careful stewardship of the series by Giovanni Singleton and Bob and all the student interns as to anything you might be about to hear. Um, despite it being National Poetry Month and celebrating the um, arrival of this, I'm going to kind of resist newness a little bit and read from across all three of my extant books. And then I'll end with um, one poem from a fourth manuscript that's still in process. So I'll start with my first book, Gun The Guns and Flags Project. Um, there's this very short poem, Absence of the Archbishop. Um, there's some famous literary archbishops. Death can come for one. Stevens apocryphally is said to have spoken of one on his deathbed, but they didn't offer any practical advice about how to contend with them. So I've made up that gap. Absence of the Archbishop. You meet it most four archbishops in a lifetime. You have it most one lifetime. You sing when in pain and expect to be heard. You see the outline of holy figures, their windows and blinds. You want to kiss the gold of the coat, and you want it to come off on your lips. You think of singing gold songs and are not, for a moment, in pain. You see the sun not as it is, but as it will be, without you, cold gold, with all the windows closed. You expect to be heard singing in your house. Now for a, a fairly long poem. Um, it's called Observations on the Florida Question. And after I'd written it, I learned quickly that it could be a permanently salient poem because it wedded a particular Florida to um, a non-particular question. And so when Elian Gonzalez came along and then the pageant, I mean, election of 2000, et cetera, it just serially seemed to be about whatever happened in a place at a time. So hopefully it'll continue to be salient but for better reasons. Observations on the Florida question. To discuss an interior is to suggest that a thing goes only so far, then stops, and that where it stops, a surface forms, and that the interior does not rush after the surface, but stays behind it, in a relation which can be called proper insofar as it is where it is, like Florida. Like Florida, the interior develops on one side of the surface, which suggests that from the interior's perspective, the world obtains as the innards of a thing, receding from the surface it shares with that thing, an arrangement at work on Florida's beaches. If the thing in question were a block of ice, one could wonder why the surface of the world were ice. How many surfaces are there between a thing and the world? How strictly does heat determine a region? If one is standing on a road beside a block of ice, if one begins to understand that situation, such that one begins to count surfaces, the ice is bound to melt in tempo, as if a road is not the best place to count surfaces, as though on a road there's a toll one must be prepared to pay when considering the number of places in which a thing and the world meet, meet but remain aloof behind that junction, maintaining their proper places in respect to each other's place and in respect to that. But then a thing may be destroyed and without a hurricane or any other name for encouragement come riding off the sea, what is the fate of the surface in destruction? Some would say it is multiplied, but which, the fate or the surface. Some would say, I refer you to the Red Cross. 
Some would say the surface multiplies until its very category folds, overwhelmed with tiny interiors, so that the thing in question begins to resemble Cubans adrift on a raft, foaming toward a sandy door which leads up out of the water and into a country blind to them. It is hard to imagine that one staring at a block of ice lying on the road would be able to step over it in hot weather. The moment in which it retains form deserves attention, but why would stepping over it be a form of disdain? The people of Tampa are suggesting from deck chairs that to move in relation to an object is to purge it of surfaces. Motion is then a destruction of interiors. Or put another way, the mind considering immigration is a block of ice in Florida, or a road which leads to Florida only by crossing the threshold of touching any other surface. Only a fertile country could furnish the proofs of what destruction does to surface, such that a Cuban could learn to love Florida as if looking out at it from inside herself. Suppose there is no fertile country. This might explain the advent of a lyric of the surface, in which one appeals to a panel of judges rotating so rapidly they quickly become known as the other judges. And one keeps appealing to them for admission. And that is the substance of this type of lyric down in Florida, where so many have been asked to wait, to wait while the body abated, abated on a road called crimson, crimson alone, alone as touch, touch lonely among surfaces, old age, old age hears music in the palms, sunburnt government, and many other names. This is an example of the coarsening of surface through multiplication. And in Florida, there is as yet no solution for its cascading effect on interiors. And one is not always even in Florida. But on its bright roads, one is not in a good position to know an interior. Suggesting that depth is a succession of flat surfaces like color, like stacked palm leaves copying a sundown in green and brown, is the color of a surface a function of in which direction one considers interior? How may two interiors lie together without forming a surface? How may they form a surface? The surface not formed by two interiors is called a road. It's called a road called, I forget. It is clear the block of ice on the road changes the world to a place known as jail filled with wardens. On it, a patient Cuban has carved an entry, continuing in a southerly direction the garden found me. This may be what it is like to learn a new language. Here's my, here's my poem about uh, being beset by theory. It's called Winter Rose. And then the French came and they killed us. And then the French came. They killed us over and over. They kissed us to red ruins. They came and they killed us with melodies and thinking. They whelmed us in their leather sine wave. They made a postscript with black boots. They came through the snow like a big thought. They killed us and they kept killing us until we spread out as some legacy in a red and white feuilleton of snow. They kept killing us in this French manner. And we bled a blue blood read aloud to the whole body, to the French around us like the lights of a dominant class. The day seemed full of a blonde perfume. It was growing quiet. Wait, said the French, before the snow be fully marcelled before the heart crack its red vest of words, and only then were we everywhere dead. Switch to green and gray now. Um, some versions of, which some of you will recognize as a truncation of an Empson title. There is no reason a poem would begin with reference to the territory with refrains to be used by all sides. No reason a poem would begin if and only if, or with refrains for a territory already conquered, invincible, a shining example of immediate environs, of damage and its image. There is no reason a poem would begin the woods are white and black, green leaves blue at certain hours, or the woods differed. 
a poem beginning, you, the thing at either end of a gun, sundown or colony, would begin as aftermaths of persons, no reason in or by a flow of pronouns, of pronouncements, of capture. A poem would begin as a play of there is and drift away. No reason, a poem would begin. We brought all lights home with us. We're porters at borders in a day done slowly away with. No reason, a poem would start by censoring my shame or yours at having a country or of the others would begin as expressive acts, stills of time, headed in all directions, in wartime or peacetime, solitary, avoidable, while snow fell, would begin, I am, is asleep in the afternoon, returns to apartments, waits in a change, steadily flashing, would begin by describing continuous, endless materials, states of sky neither mine nor someone else's, epic fragments neither beginning nor not, no reason a poem would begin so much and so more, or she hummed to himself of the many forces, these and other nights, of the things selflessly explained as snow or fire, no unreal season, a poem would begin by stating, by steadily flashing as utopia transmits its coordinates, utopiates, headed in all directions. No reason the mean of a life and a moment is the standard working day. The mean of a life and falling asleep the whole of summer. No reason a poem would begin a whole day before winter. Whole summers before night would be gone by night or touched lightly in the dark, would be abandoned there, would be gone by not having come, would come to be used by all sides, would begin with reference to refrains. I'm going to read a fairly long poem from the end of the book called Hysteron Proteron, um, an ancient and fairly infrequently used figure, which just means any kind of rearrangement of cause and effect that's not the traditional um, progressive model. Um, I think it means there are people in this room who can embarrass me by telling me exactly um, the, the later earlier. So it means any kind of jumbling of cause and effect. And this poem begins after I'm dead, moves back through my life, and then into a, a history of um, cultural monuments from both the West and the East. Um, it dilates in the middle around my lifetime. I apologize for that narcissism. Um, so the goal, it's moving backwards in time just like um, effect can come before cause. Hysteron Proteron. What follows are examples of all that has happened, of that which hasn't failed to occur in any kind of archive at all, of that which suffers commemoration, of a change or changes from no fixed state, of that which occurs before I become fatally ill, should that be what happens, before a term not yet known fades from use after taking hold for too long. A flow of examples called feeling one's way, broken sleep and friendship, the running of programs, daylight, the invisible gardener, sunset, an inventory of not yet to no longer. Nights looking at the sky of living in an empire, strange it would extend so far, extends so far. A product of days, if there are any of those. Any part of the bare life and sound of the group, not yet accounted for, yielded, made, and trained. In little groups of one or more, being overheard becomes lyrical politics, goes nowhere, passes, sets. A feeling of meeting on corners disappears almost entirely from law and mind and reappears precisely for that reason. The chosen design is finished and thought of, approved slag from which choice lifts off like a craving in space, latest thing about which even the poorest can have an opinion, can only have it. The way one sees a building become a set of buildings, then leap off into the sky together, the way one sees no longer. Staying in love to the rhythm of bombs, before the package hits the before fired, before aimed. It's discovered statues go on forever when falling, and when remembered just after, as right before having done so. This is written leaving Paris after having come there for seven days to celebrate the birthday of a friend. It's described by that friend, and a certain snow blows over and under a bridge on the Seine, heedless until explained. 
he begins to describe it. Eve is claimed born across the water and not yet proved. Eve is made. Now in poor taste to have thoughts, think of having them, do anything other than receive announcements meant for anyone, perfect a current in the set of the mouth, feel of being ruled from inside and out, the stung thought of skin from either side. The new plans are unveiled, a year of gavels coming down, all the unrelated deaths which can't seem to help coming after, falling in love to the news of bombs, multiply helpless, ebbing to a future. The related deaths are related. Some last calls to loved ones are overheard. Some of them overt, some relying on knowledge to come, all overt in adding last moments to a mutual past, soon everyone's. The metaphors fall from the sky, survived by a concerned professional tone, narrations as far from revulsion as pleasure. The buildings fall, the other than the one. Like a craving in space, a new language, the fortuitous encounter on a sky of two planes and two towers, some last calls to loved ones are made, an inaudible change in destination, a morning advancing east to west, revealing the east or taking back the west. 911 is a joke. How can I move the crowd, police and thieves, the ocean? What is the meaning of a pure series of songs? A screaming comes across the sky. The metaphors go up and the towers are built. Paul Salon enters the life of the sun, saying butterfly, crying, being born in Beth Israel, being made. Todesfuga. After the first death, there is no other. I am going to write it for you. Cracks and reforms and bursts in the violet air. The figure five in gold on a red fire truck, moving tents unheeded. Sunday morning's first stanza. Decorative arts, the dream of John Ball. The fortuitous encounter on a dissecting table of a sewing machine and an umbrella. The sea whispered, I prefer not to. Ozymandias and Darien. Fourier reads Sade and begins to believe that pleasure is a butterfly, self-interest a flower in the garden. They take their solitary way. Flowers freaked with jet, landscape with fall of Icarus, and children's games. John Ball dies. John Ball writes a letter to the countryside and is born. Dante's arrow hits the target. The black stone is worshipped, shattered, worshipped, polished, found. Before all that can be called before is written, copied, written, copied, found. And that advice on the battlefield of spring in Mantua, when the bees return to the saffron flowers. I hate and I love. I feel it happening and letters suddenly allowed separate realms of sound. The unfinished tower, like a craving in language, is thought to exist, abandoned, worked on, begins to be built. Eve is born, Eve is claimed and made. All fall narratives, including the sun. Pronouns, now, this place, then. Clouds in the water, love of the future. And now a similarly uplifting poem, but much shorter. Two classes, that's T.O. I am that member of the family of things that never leaves the house again and steps into war church each hour that corresponds to images and on the street, your face and body and clothes, your walk and silky destinations. Without knowing it, I digest your choices and forget to connect you to the rest. You in whom the years have changed. You both a block and its veins, the portion, path to the places that are gone to. The music is going, if there is music. There's always some sound or other, signs of effort on the face of the air. There are those who wait in longing to hear, and those around whom dead waves flow. It's like twilight to be alive now. Finally. Um, vague Cadence, a, a short poem as well that often ends in the same two words like some of my favorite songs by Juvenile. <laughs> Vague cadence, 
and a way of practice, the other is. Like a river out of Acts, the other is hapless, unheard, with marks upon him, having dallied in tarrying unwisely, backlit at an undecidable remove. In a house of marks, the other is useless deciding whether to go or wait in best practices, like a child, a hapless river filled with sand. For years it flows like unmarked rope, years of saying as it moves away are the undecided water others bring. Like the child of Acts, the other is saying to himself, the other is a hapless river practicing its flow, a house that moves to where one was. With all years off, the water goes, the lights are on, so the dark is out. Like the useless children, others are a certain building dream within a part of speech without a name. Bohemian Grove, um, a reference to an encampment up in the Redwoods north of here that um, Bob actually infiltrated once, I think only once, um, where captains of industry who ruin the world take a break from that and dress up as women. Um, <laughs> and put on pageants. It's been around since the 19th century, and so this poem sort of morphs through time and through syntax at the same time while taking on the history of that place. Um, I use the word hulri in it, um, a specific form of concubine that in this case will be played by those captains of industry. Bohemian Grove. Grab our missing spears and begin to think the Bohemian Grove. Trees, theatricals, songs that hold exquisite filterings of sunlight down to the boys were women there in the powerful glades in the 20s. There's nothing like it to have loins for the first time running around in leaves in the 70s. I sang a song of we became ourselves again as women, specifically huris, the leaves of love falling by chopper and could see the security cordon of leaves running around excited to be playing a part in the hush of the woods. Donald called me songbird, and to be fit for the world, one must periodically leave it affectionately for the age and straightness of trees in the 80s, whispering at the clearing's edge about how to keep both houses. No one hurt when respect is earned by singing a short theme in the 40s at the tree line, theatricals, excited to be putting on a helmet and running around in the dark on my knees in the sun, being told as a group what to do about how soft I was, the pillows in my chamber with choppers landing and a glow through the trees spread uncomfortably around the clearing till there's nothing like it, going missing, and the distance you begin to think. Respect, hushing the woods with a part to play, blacked out in the secret authority of choosing a heavy gold dress to wear. Over on the other side of the clearing, songs hold the men like huris, for the first time leaving the world affectionately at play in choppers and leaves. No one is hurt at the edge of themselves, running from the news of sunlight into heavy dresses the warriors wore for a production of the 50s, absence of birdsong there in the powerful soil. Here's a poem about Karl Marx's famous table. Poem beginning to end. The trees are men, men strange. Strangers come into a house to speak across a table made of trees. Waking was fighting at it while looking at a thing you own is sleeping outdoors without knowing why the reasons escape, so continuing to eat and drink. I think you have to in order to be ready, a cup seriously open, ready to talk or gesture with it, show the house has no roof, men are coming in, this is a cup. We make a tableau called embarrassment at a physical past, the one prepared accordingly, your instincts stopped now in admitting daylight. I was fighting or talking about this feeling, taken from a box of scarves, cardboard box from another move marked by faint incursions, games so-called, because all was still in play. That table, for instance, where a hand is trained to follow the eye into goals, this cup moving on its own through the single family dwelling space contracts to, angry from the outset that a hand is still involved and seen. I went back to sleep in the middle of our argument, 
speech about forgotten labor, a lamp can sing with its head bent, remarks I should anticipate I am the shadow objections to, streaming out from the faucet to be cut in half by hand. The entire room, far off talk, content to happen tone on tone, the strong illusion, and night deaf as a mural, not made so much as lovingly assembled from memories of those who couldn't get out of the way, now here in the form of a cup, alien when brought to bed from table, and the table not made so much as overturned, evolving from its legs a depth mourning is the answer to. I'm going to now read an excerpt from that long poem, Metropole, that concludes the book. Um, and then I'm just one short poem after that from a new work. Um, as Bob said, the, it's iambic, but it's prose. And I've taken pity by having there be a, sort of three slim bands of prose rather than it being a, a pure wall of noise and information. Um, in addition to that sort of formal pitting of meter against a kind of disjunctive prose, it also um, has this hinge mechanism where a word can be part of two distinct syntactic environments at the same time. And I always trot out the easiest example of that. Um, the, the sun revolves around the earth, revolves around the sun, right? Where um, earth is a prepositional object and a subject as well at, at the same time. So I'm just going to read about five pages from it. That hinge effect makes it incredibly difficult to read. And so I'll constantly be out of breath, and you should feel sorry for me. Doomsday scenario. Things go on as usual. The end of March takes several days detained in separate rooms their stories didn't match. No one's sure if pigeons cock their heads in flight or care which ledge. A platform shakes, collective fear as duffel bag. A song alongside conversation goes French gray at collar, turning purple green, then turning back. The speed at which a starling lands co-varies with the kind of food. It's after April, weather held no lasting sign. That kind of ritual requires dimming lights until approval channels through the glow. The opposite of May Day is this Saturday from 9 to 9. I'd liken it to living in a railroad flat together breeds contempt. I knew you'd say both parties were at fault. Out through unrelated conversations, sequels observation can't help running off to see them there. The outdoor diners laughing over densities, the foliage becomes towards nightfall. Sounds seem louder when dissevered from their source, while music springs from failing words. A working theory, those I don't yet know would love me if they knew what I'd been through. Even sympathy that slowed them down a touch in passing would suffice till office tensions magically resolve. Yet no one dances sober anymore, unless insane. Or gathering around the ice flow's edge, excitedly they jostle till the first of them falls in a beat, the rest now safely wondering, if you can read this, then you owe your teachers thanks. I heard a voice begin to do just that, rhyme prose with those across the room in drunkenness like press assembled on the courthouse steps. You know you're being used, but nonetheless excited standing there around the whole expedience, I think they call it without end. Being used a parody of freer offering, so get thee hence they do. If I can make it through the end of May, I'll question everything you mentioned now seems right. I didn't know adults could sing. Technologies of starless navigation, joy from out of nothing much, the whereabouts of documents without which entering the country will be difficult. All these remind me of your climbing out of Titan smiles. The child, his body hid, sang lines that rolled up dollar bills would double back on. I fell asleep, withdrawing. Milieus disguised continue on across the dome implied by city lights. Meanwhile, the face stays slashed within unseen professions. Jobs got easier to quit, though often scarred I'd get another. Soon the period in question, strings of colored lights. Embarrassing, they've hung them up some time to come. I'm saying that in trying to become concise, the year ends awkwardly. They gave each other gift certificates whose thefts concealed a darkness fell to make the room more private. I haven't learned the unmet form the most important group, still time to do so. Yet the writing looks unchanged throughout, betraying little sign of age, disease, or mood in which he could complete the irony. 
alone. I worked all night walled up to you. I owe my recent fascination with the details of regimes. They have a unifying look. A single day would hardly tolerate. Pink cactus flowers, Pontiac's demise, things the weak contained. When done, she'll spend more time with both of us, admit we feel this way. Transliteration of their calls still not the same as hearing CNN announce returns than host reporters via hologram, they're gone now. Nothing could prepare the crowd to hear his blend of rhythm and sobriety, nor did they want to stand. Unmoved, he sat there nodding. Off a ways one sees pedestrians committing to a path through other bodies opening and closing in the situation room. Squinting when the lights go on, as if my eyes held wishes disappointed power didn't come from coal. Yes, waking up had always gone that way. Struggles half obscured in blood and fire, yellow, red, and gold at cheek and throat. I turned the moment on. His face was shining out of gratitude for aid, recording that effect successive waves return from just beyond the shore where ice road free use of these motifs suggests a supple understanding that the face and head can turn repeatedly. The pattern of the shield was raised with spears like current hours sent through time to sea. So some believe it written very quickly, others soon agreed. The owl or spider hidden on the dollar bill, rewarding paranoia is, if anything, a printer's mark. Viewed through small embedded lights, North Oakland looks like contests won by quiet whites and pinks the jasmine spills. No chance of living anywhere, but testing grounds of marriage say they can't afford to win the fight. Continuing allows them new recruits. Eventually, the steps outside sound indistinct from cracking ice or banging on a table. Those demands. I went alone, accompanied. Unaware your eyes were closed and exercise and trust, the euphemisms from that time as though December needed any more, now look like ways live feeling deadened walking forward into crowds. No one spoke. The contents in their bag of errands glowed until he couldn't take it. So disgusted by the holidays, they'd broken down the Walmart's doors and trampled several children in a parody of getting back what's theirs. Damage, both a measure and a measurement, they make their last attempt to settle down. Her mania begins with overspending, gifts. Your wages went so far you try again it clogged. Surprising how remembering a private pain resembles car alarms. Walled towns and river bridges both gave way before a future no one lives to see arrives, repent. Assembly lines, amusement parks for products, riding belts through time is falling snow, still coming down the white of shredded packaging. We watched together and apart, a memory in other eyes revived. The argument went down some unrescinding paths. He failed to see how leaving would improve. On finishing the class, I feel used up the time we had, but wouldn't want to vouch for their experience. Recent cuts, both ways across the mouth goes breathing speech. Obesity was common on the graveyard shift. I worked for several years, then left like Bartleby. Afterwards, I thought of his events quotations bring. So visits home were reading foreign text by dimming lights, the prep work done. She comes back in to join us, pleased we follow scripts. The sun revolves around the earth, revolves around the sun. Looking at the waves, I tried to be completely stationary. Swells, they used to call them. That New York is gone. Beneath prosperity, an older country waits. But if full candor is your god, the past looks wrong. If not, a kind of languor then at having limbs. This figure represents the English influence and holds a sounding lead. Between the crossed arms of the windmill, beavers flanked by barrels stand for native products, mentioning lament. The middle rests like policy. It's not the NYPD shield for nothing. Though sitting on the water where our thoughts assemble furniture, it's hard to think of them as having done too much regarding sentencing reform is not enough. Avoiding summary, the prison dully glows with certain colors banned. Long before they run for local office, they have trained to speak while looking through a window, unaware of on which side the house is, none can say. All alone, the laws change helplessly. We teach them anyway. They're building more without consent, far off, across the water, undetected. The system runs on shock and modeled acquiescence, like the dominance in packs of dogs. 
looted, bombed, and burned. The snow is falling generally, a paraphrase. You're doing fine. Inside the claim, you haven't seen the sun for several days as though my care could also disappear. The public works he promised sounded like a story told to children drop their toys in time. Softly, this economy holds all who have it. A hand will not release its branch until the next one's grabbed. He thought of trade beginning in those private moves. The next few weeks look hard for you, like always. Um, I wanted to end with a short poem from my current manuscript that came out of hearing a, a song for the first time at a memorial in the fall for our late colleague, uh, Janet Edelman. Um, I don't know much about classical music, which is why I'd never encountered it before. It's a song called Beim Schlafengehen, Going to Sleep, by the composer Richard Strauss, which he wrote in the last year of his life. I think he was 84. And I don't think he lived to hear it performed. I'm not positive about that. And I was just shocked by how it seems to always be ending and, and doesn't, and then you get used to that, and then it does end. Four last songs. The sound was like picking sad battles, the red that white imagines yellow is. It was the sound of forgetting what to do with the senses, being equally surprised by a voice subsiding come slowly back, or edging toward actual close. I'd forgotten to pay attention for years to a song I heard for the first time at the end of a recent memorial, an actual song by Strauss about going to sleep, predicting one's own death, etc. Let me say this. I was surprised it kept going, then surprised that it ended. This was always true but could be more so. Much like those years of not knowing, the song felt brought back now as inattention to its red presence. And there are many versions of four last songs and of this one, as many as there are people who have made and played them. Each one stands as someone's else, the color of fading color, lastness pluralized, because going to sleep keeps redoing the translation without fully having done. But this only applies to Beim Schlafengehen from the four last songs of Strauss. Thank you. Thanks, Jeffrey, so much. Uh, the, the new book and the previous books are available right there, thanks to the UC Bookstore. And Jeffrey can stay around for a little bit to uh, chat and to sign books if you'd like. Thanks again very much. Mm -hmm.